Hey guys, welcome back to Indoor Reef. So in this video I'm going to give you an update on how my reef tank is coming along and also at the end share some really exciting news with you that's going to change the direction of this channel. <laughs> Hey guys, so welcome to Indoor Reef. This is actually going to be my first tank update on this tank. So as you can probably tell, it's not a new tank. It's actually been running for a little over two years now, but I've never um, really done just a pure update on it before. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you a few of the things that have changed in the tank recently. So some of them good, some of them bad. Um, those of you who've seen my video about um, creating the Zoa Garden, uh, I can kind of tell you a little bit about how that's been going and um, show you the results so far. So let's dive straight in. So the first thing to notice is that the big uh, plating Montipora I've got up the top has not been doing so well. So yeah, you can see there's a lot of dead areas here. I'm not 100% sure why this happened, but you know, it would seem that I maybe hadn't kept things stable enough. The dosing pumps, it looked like that they'd become blocked. And I think um, that what had been happening is it had been like calcifying around the ends of the dosing pump. So you can see here they're much cleaner now. I kind of cleaned them out a lot. But the dosing pump tubes were kind of blocked and it was causing it to run along. Um, the ends and it there was a huge chunk in fact I'm not sure I've cleaned it up so I can probably show you around the back but if you can see this there was loads of like like I guess like calcification would you call it building up there and um, yeah ultimately I think this caused the dosing to get out I probably wasn't checking it often enough also things were looking quite good so I fell into that old uh, cliche of not doing enough water changes <laughs> So anyway, yeah, by the time, you know, I kind of realized the, the Monty here was dying off. Also, it's starting to get a bit colder here now. And, and what this means is, you know, when I do water changes, it's more important that I uh, preheat the water, which I hadn't been doing. So anyway, yeah, it wasn't in a good way, but, you know, you, you can probably see there now it's starting to grow back. So I keep watching the, all the little gaps between it and each each few days they seem to be closing up more but you can really see the growth coming back there now and uh, the algae's kind of stopped growing and I think these little uh, snails up here are also helping keep that in check. Okay, anyway, so it's not all doom and gloom. The zoas down here are absolutely raging at the moment. So I keep having to move these further apart and try and nudge them into a different position in the tank so they're not up on the glass like you can see here they are. So I've tried to separate out the the ones on this kind of long piece here and these two colonies at the front because they were growing um, straight into each other and you can kind of see there actually where I've pushed them apart and you can still see the original shape of where they were joined. Um, yeah, I really, really like those ones. They're actually the first coral I got, those um, kind of like bright lime green. So I, yeah, I, w I want these to do as well as possible. Um, the frag behind of the radioactive green sowers, yeah, the, again, just growing really well. I mean, um, I think my nitrates had start to get really high because I hadn't been um, doing enough water changes and maybe this kind of helped the sowers a bit, but I'd say all of these sowers here now are, are just growing like mad. I'm, I'm going to probably have to try and frag them a little bit soon. And um, yeah, just putting the frag plugs in, like you can see there, just to try and give them something to grow onto, make it a little bit easier. Yeah, this Monty here had died back a bit when, like we're saying, when the time at the top one did. And, and like now it's died off, the Zoas are finding it much easier to grow onto it. So I've kind of found in my experience that Zoas don't seem to like to grow onto Montipora. Like the, the Montipora doesn't kill them and the Zoas gradually just shade the Monty out and kill it. And then it can climb over. But yeah, now it's dying. They seem to be sticking to it a lot better. Okay, so let's have a look at how the Zoas are doing over this side of the tank. So um, got the Mind Trick Zoas down the front. These things just grow like crazy, so they're just growing so fast, which is really cool because I think they were really like 
cool looking Zoa. So, you know, you've got the yellow fringes with a little bit of green in there as well. Yeah, and the pinks, purples, a little bit of blue. So this is really cool. And they're not one of the cheapest either. And I find that normally the cheap ones grow really fast, the ones that don't look as good. So the fact that these are growing is really cool, yeah. Yeah, these, uh, I don't know what you'd call them again. Uh, rubbish with the names. I think you've seen a trend here. Uh, eagle eyes, I think. Yeah, they've always been a bit washed out. So I don't know if, I think they may be getting too much light. It's really hard to say because the ones that seem to grow better are the ones that are facing away from the light. But yeah, not 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 really for sure. Yeah, and i got this kind of generic. So I was behind doing quite well. Aikens. They're growing really well. I, I don't know if you've seen this one in my tank before, if this was um, a new addition since my last video, but yeah, the colours are really cool. Um, yeah, again, just Aiken Zoas all kind of growing together. Really happy with this. Um, my rainbow Aiken in there is probably doing about as good as it's ever been, to be honest. You know, it's stuff down here on the sand bed, really happy with it. Torch, yeah, doing all right. I always feel like I could give it a bit more flow. But yeah, it's a small tank. I can kind of only do what flow I can kind of do in here. I think too much and it would kind of send everything flying. And yeah, then it'd be too much for the Aikens. I mean, I don't know if you can see this here. Uh, if I try and hold really still, but the Aikens kind of just wobble. I've got the flow on these just right, in my opinion. Um, you know, it kind of just moves the flesh, but... Uh, not enough to damage them, but yeah, just enough to, to keep things moving. So yeah, I can't really give any more for the torch, I don't think, otherwise it would um, probably upset stuff in the middle of the tank. Xenia, it's just about keeping it in check, right? So if you haven't seen my other video about how I do this, then, you know, definitely um, head over there, check that out. Um, you might find it interesting. Over this side, so I've recently just restructured everything over here. So what was fine is some of the rest of Zoas were starting to get uh, shaded by these um, big red Zoas. So I think they're um, people eaters, I think they're called. So I really wanted to shuffle that a little bit. And then the mushrooms were kind of growing over everything. So what I did, I kind of picked everything out, completely lifted all the rocks out of this part stuffed all the mushrooms to the back uh used it as a chance to kind of clean out a bit over here and yeah restructured everything and again the zoas even up here like the rest of zoas i've never really had much luck with these guys growing and honestly now they're growing probably as well as they ever have done so yeah zoa wise i'm really happy it's just a shame about the big monty in the middle but hey ho it's starting to grow back live and learn Around the same time that I had the problem, the Monty, I, uh, I, I lost the forest fire. I mean, I couldn't really say this was doing so great anyway. There was like a bit of a, a dip and then everything just took a bit of a gradual slide. And I, I was starting to think about actually fragging the big Monty in the middle just to try and save what I can. But I just kept cleaning it off and eventually it kind of settled. And like I say, now it's really good. You can see the regrowth. If I'd shown you this a week or so ago, then you would have not seen like this little bit in the like there kind of joined up. So it's definitely growing and you can see this with the with the white uh, tips. There was algae growing on this little uh, branching Monty up here and to, I'm really terrible for being able to clean the algae off these without snapping them. So yeah, that, that happened up there. But right now I'm just trying to get things kind of back stable and that again, like... I think I hadn't kept on top of stuff maybe quite as well as I should have done. And I'd be, you know, a small tank, it, it can be really difficult to keep things stable, especially when I've got this much coral in it. But that's not true, is it? No, it's a good excuse. <laughs> Don't keep the salinity quite stable. Salinity is a really interesting one, actually, because what I did is I got a HANA checker recently. So I decided that I've been using the refractometer now for about two years and... I always find every time I test my water, I test it and I come back a few minutes later, test it again and I get different results. Really quite different as well. And I've kind of just tested over and over and over and tried to take an average and I got, you know, I have some um, calibration fluid for quite some time. But, you know, maybe I kind of, this caught up with me in the end a little bit. So what I did, I got myself one of the HANA salinity checkers. Um, I'll do a kind of full video on that another time, but it's much, much easier. You just dip it in, read the value 
value off it. You know, this makes making salt water up so much easier. Yeah, really, really big fan of this. I mean, not everybody likes them. Some say they're a bit inaccurate, but I've decided this is what I'm going to use all the time. So, you know, even if it is slightly out, a bit higher, a bit low, then as long as it's consistent, I think that's probably the most important thing. Um, other things I've made sure I keep on top of cleaning the wave maker so that we get these uh, good waves. And I like to point that towards the surface, keep the ripples up. Something else which I've done, I finally got round to changing out the sponge up here. So this had been getting absolutely atrocious. To be honest, it didn't look even look much like a sponge anymore. It was just like rags. I'd been kind of holding off doing it. I've actually had it a little while, but I kind of want to include it in a video, which I guess I probably didn't end up doing in the end. But this probably wasn't helping. Like if I did a nitrate test around the time the Monty started dying and the nitrates were just so high and it's a, an API test kit, so I didn't get an exact reading, but it was too high. So anyway, now I've been doing much more frequent water changes, kind of brought things down, got everything back under control. And I could see straight away, everything just looks cleaner. Everything looks healthier. It's growing better. Yeah, generally really good. And you know what? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how things are going at the moment. I was a bit frustrated at myself, but I guess it was just one of those uh, lessons. And something else that kind of triggered me to do as well was kind of clean out my saltwater storage containers. So these were getting really dirty. I don't know if this was affecting it, but I don't think it could have been a great thing that they were like that. Also, you know, I've been buying my water from a local uh, local shops, in fact, not just one. So I'd buy RO water and then I would mix it up into salt water myself. Because of everything that's happened this year with, you know, COVID and everything, a lot of the shops haven't always been open or I've not been traveling out quite as often. So I maybe haven't gone to the shops to collect water. And this has meant I've tried to kind of eke it out a little bit longer with less water changes, especially when things have looked quite good anyway. Yeah, and I don't think this was a good sign. So I kind of finally bit the bullet and got an RODI machine. And I am so glad I got this. And I feel like, I'm not that I ever had any reason to say that the water I was getting wasn't good, but now I've kind of got that confidence that it's in my control. And, you know, I've never tested the water I've been getting, but now I do test it. I know it's zero TDS. I've got as much as I need. I can do as many water changes as I need. It's a really good position to be in. So I think kind of all these things together you know getting me in a good way and probably served as kind of a good reminder just to keep on top of things but yeah still enjoying it loving it um in fact so much so that i have actually got some interesting news to share as i mentioned at the start of the video i've got a much bigger tank that's just turned up and i'm actually setting it up in the other room so this channel is probably going to be changing a little bit over the next uh, weeks and months so if you are interested in that i'll be doing more videos on this so subscribe and um and you won't miss any of these so hopefully you found it interesting to see how the tank's been evolving you know going to be doing probably a lot more videos over the coming weeks and months uh, with the new tank um yeah subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all of that i will be running this tank for a little bit longer uh, i want to get the other one fully set up and cycled and stable before i move any of these things over and then i'll start well i will eventually move all of the stock over there's only a few things that i might not take so xenia you know loved it over here but i don't think i'm ready for that in a bigger tank i think it'll just be too much to handle um, not sure about the mushrooms yet. So I do have bubble algae in this tank, which you may have seen or remember from the other videos. And I've really been going militant on this bubble algae and almost to the point that I've not been worried, particularly with some of the uh, mushrooms and things that if I disturb them a little bit, um, you know, I really want to just get this bubble algae kind of out the tank and see for several months that it's well and truly under control so that I don't want any chance of moving this across into the other tank, at least not in plague proportions. You know, the other tank really setting it up as a bit of a like dream tank, if you like, in terms of certainly compared to this tank and what I've had so far, I really want to set it up and do it really right. And I'm doing some really exciting things on that. So yeah, until next time on Indoor Reef, keep it stable, keep it fun and keep reefing. Thank <laughs> you.